some of the things that drive children from their families, you know, are common. Like there is no food in family A, there is no food in family B, but the child in family A runs away. So hunger, there is neglect, there is abuse, there is truancy, different things. Yeah. My name is uh, Charity Waichari. I am the current uh, director for Tumaini Kawatoto, Kenya. We have adopted the model of relating with children on the streets, uh, finding out why they are there, finding out whether they would like to go back home and then walking the journey back to where the child comes from, uh, addressing the issues that drove the child out of the family in the first place, then um, building the family's capacity to nurture their child and making them understand that this, uh, we are not the main uh, players, we are not the main helpers in the recovery or in the helping of their child. They have to participate. Kevin, are mwana mwega mahima. Mahida Maria ara thomaga ngirwara eh dale moko akiambiriria kuremo ngambire akiremo ni guthi sukuru tondu ndiari na hinya wa kumurehera bia. Akiambiriria makeingira akeingirania na ciana cia Asia chokora. Mabiriria koingirana na ciana icio agikara kwa rong kedo kahinda takameri tato wa ugo ndio nigetha akwe akwire Kevin na mwako mwe na mieri tatu ndio nike giatumire e urage tondu akorire suretie Nida kenire tondu hedere acokire musie kwa hinda riria twamenyanire na John nietikirire kumurihira cukuru leu agicoka cukuru na akiambia guthoma kiogwo nida kenire I was touched by the generosity of Kevin's mother Though she has a small house, she just wanted us to sit in her house. I was also touched by seeing tears because that one shows also that um, she is still hurting in her heart by what she has gone through. When a child is exposed to the street, there's something that hardens in them. But when you look at Kevin, you cannot even trace she, he was on the street or not. So for me, I was thinking, you know, how hope is restored. In 2003, the government started setting up these centers, collecting children from the streets and putting them in these centers. And we had lost one child of, that we were meditating with on the streets. And someone said, go look for him at um, Joseph Kangede uh, Rehab Center. And so we started relating with the, those city council officials. Our mandate as a Nairobi city county is to rescue these children from street. They come to rehabilitation center for reforming. This is where now we, uh, we reform these children. Uh, we reform them uh, through education. We have uh, some activities which we undertake, like uh, guidance and counseling, mentorship. When they are in the street, they are free to do anything. They are free to, to beg for the money. Here, yeah, now we cannot accept it, uh, them to do that. We want to reform them as children. One day when I was back from school, uh, the, the stepfather told my mother and I and my brothers to leave the house. So we, start, we started surviving in, in the slums of Kayole. One day I stole 
from my mother some money. Then I escaped from home. I went and uh, stayed in the streets with other other street children. There was a lady who who used to come and teach us the dangers of staying in the streets. So one day that lady came and she took me and she brought me here. My father didn't have that money for, for me to be in school. And I have to struggle to go with the other boys there in the village to go and find some work which I can do so that I can help my father to put even a plate on a table. I was told by a friend of mine that when I came to Nairobi, I'll, I'll have money because it's a city where money is all over. I made a choice, but for God's sake, I met city council and they brought me here and they took me to school. This life, is, it is not like the, the life on the street. You clean where you are staying. You, you wash your, your clothes. You, you shower, then you go uh, to school. There are those who are not willing to stay at the center, who normally are rescued by the county officers. Then after being rescued, the next day, they escape. Life here, I can't say that it is easy. You have to struggle. Sometimes I, I go down there to the market to look for some bananas and something else which I can use to release my hunger. Our goal is we achieve when we see we reintegrate uh, these children back home to the society and they can just interact with their families. friendships that's the way it begins we hit the streets and we get to know who the child is uh, their aspirations what they would like to be what drove them to the streets so we start with that relationships they can trust us we can trust them once they agree or decide they want to go back home we make uh, the journey is to where they come from, no matter how far. Living in the streets is so very hard and so very painful because there there is no a friend. Everyone is guilty because of you. Everyone is very angry. I saw my friends in, uh, in that place dying, others 
they got injured, they were taken to hospital. So even when I, uh, I see back my life when I was straight, it's so painful. So I would like not to go there. So, yeah. We are so very happy to see our mom here, how to bring for us, uh, our visitors, uh, our Zungus from another one countries. Uh, from uh, another one countries. So we are saying welcome again and welcome again. And we are so very hungry, we want to eat. Uh, we are so very hungry, we want to eat some. When we began, it was like a test, does this work? And over the years, you see it really works and you can uh, replicate it all the time. So it's almost guaranteed that once you connect really well with a child, they would be able to go back to their family. Right now we are going to Nakuru. From Nakuru to Nairobi, it's about a two, two to three hours drive. We are going to rescue a boy and have an opportunity to take to his home and uh, try to do some case study to understand what are the, some of the underlying issues that made this boy find himself on the street. One of the things that we don't know is where the boy comes from. So we are just going to, we are going to look for his home. Uh, he might lie, he might lie because he's not want to say the truth. Number one, because of the trust issue. That, you know, we are strangers, have been meeting him the first day, and now hearing from him, he may not trust us uh, much to tell us uh, the truth. But again, as you continue, probably on the way home, he may start uh, opening up and telling us uh, more about uh, his story. Okay, guys, come. You know, it's a nice town. You can say it's like uh, Nakuru is more of the gate to Nairobi because all the children from the Western, when they come, they have to land in Nakuru. Uh, they're from here in Nakuru, they settle because some of them, they come by the big buses. They lie on the boots of the, the buses. So when they come here, they are tired. So when the bus stops, you find that uh, they are light, hang around a little bit. If the environment is hostile for them, they find themselves coming to Nairobi. That's what happens. Mm. Oh, thank you. Find them. We had a boy from Tumaini that uh, we have paid for them as school fees, and the boy is struggling to settle in school. And I was challenging him that, uh, lucky that uh, you have parents. Personally, I do not have parents. You are lucky your brothers and sisters. I don't have brothers and sisters. You are lucky you have someone to pay for your fees. I have to pay my sacrifice, my salary, 
a little bit to pay my fees with my family, do my personal development and all that. So sometimes I stand as a testimony or uh, like a benchmark for other children that are, have gone through or who are still also going through what I have gone through. Yeah. And uh, at the end of the day, when they listen to my story, they become motivated and uh, they feel like, oh, we can also make it. Life in the street is not good. You, you, you can find yourself engaging in drugs and drugs are not good in our health because you are still young and you have a future. So you find that when you start using these drugs, they will not affect you now, but they affect you later. My fellow friends were telling me that it makes you feel, you will, not, you will never feel hungry. So when you put it, you just feel satisfied. You, you sleep, you don't feel cold. They were, the, they were just myths and misconceptions. Yeah, it's my friends, my brothers. The aspect of um, working with the children, I would say it is in my heart. Yeah, that one I would say it is in my heart. Yeah, I don't struggle with it. Relating with them, I don't struggle with it. And uh, it gives me joy. Yes, it gives me joy. <laughs> So this boy, we have taken him out of the street. Now we are going to leave him. We want to take him back to the family. He is ready. He wants to go home. He's taller. No? You have got support. You have even been taller than me. <laughs> I, I like this boy because uh, he's intelligent and he wants to go back to school and he loves the mom so much. He told me the mom is sick. She, 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 the mom has a problem, a leg problem. Now she, the mom cannot be able to take care of him. The mom just stays at home. Now the boy had to, to fend for the mama, the mother. Not the mother taking care of the boy. But now the boy is the one taking care of the mother. You can imagine how difficult it is. Yeah. Give me a So he wants to go back to school. So I'm asking him to write the details to verify that he's in class, class five. It means that he knows how to write. So just verifying that he has been in school and he can remember what he did here. How far is it from it here? It's about uh, let's say, uh, 15 minutes. Upper? Iboma. Okay. Upper? The rehabilitation Upper. angle happens in the family because uh, a child on the streets is a, a reflection of a bigger issue in the family. So we want to work with the main players in this uh, problem. So the child and his family and his community. So those are the people that we engage with in rehabilitating a child. Mm. 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 Mm.
The restoration journey is a uh, long term and that involves everyone, the educators, uh, the government representative, local and even uh, uh, the administration around so that we help this child feel that uh, they are in good hands. A real kid leaving home is not because of school fees or food. He's the one who left. In fact, the mom was saying now it's stress in the house because because of what they're going through. Now there's also issues in the home. And that's why she was trying to ask me now, what, what have you done to you? That you can just go and stay with this kid. You know, we have given you everything, everything that you have wanted, we have given you. But now you, you're just running, you're going, uh, you know, sleeping on the street while you have a house here, yeah, a bed that you know you can sleep on. Instead of working with the family where the child comes from, there is a tendency to try out other means, hide the children somewhere, think the child is a problem. Instead of working with the natural provider of all the facilities that the government wants to give, nature, uh, love, care, and um, even education, families are able to provide this naturally. But when you take it out of the family, it becomes a difficult thing. But for some reason, everyone tends to think this is what would work. Right now, we are going to see Brian, who is uh, in Chani High School. But we are still following him up so that we can encourage him to achieve his dream. What I will do is to use the facility of the school to achieve what I came to do here and to do my best and even show others that, that there's someone who stands still on you and shall help you. My dream is to assist those children who can't assist themselves. So that is what I can do. How do you relate with the, okay, maybe your peers? My peers, I just can't say. But the, the one that I sleep with, uh, uh, next to my bed, mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing good with him. Yeah, so yes, you, talk, I, yeah, you uh, have a yes, time I can to assist him. with them. Yes. For me, uh, I dream starting from standard five up to now, I wanted to be an engineer. I'll be stand high and represent King. Uh, for me, I like helping those who are needy. Yeah. When I finish studying, want to become a neurosurgeon. <laughs> I'm seeing your bed is literally done. I always do that at the end of the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Brian, have you learned it from Humphrey or you also do it the same way? I admire his spirit. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. I would encourage you to keep it up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yes. It's a, it's a good culture you are cultivating. Yeah. Yeah, because even when you get out of school mm. um, you uh, and maybe you get employed, yeah. you still have to ca carry on mm. with that culture of waking up and preparing early. Yeah. Yeah. For Brian, I could take my mind back to where we got him on the street and the journey we have fought with him and where he is right now. And um, as we were talking, I could ask him now, do you remember where you are? And then he, he could say, ah, yes. If we never came for you, where do you think we could be? Hey, I could be lost. I, I don't want even to imagine. I, I was so happy to see him, you know, also being confident and having a focus in future. Yeah, though he has a past, he's also seeing 
there is a future which is bright for him. For Humphrey, I liked the way he also looked confident and um, I could see that he really appreciated what uh, Tumaini has, uh, has done for him, providing school fees. I also was encouraged by his commitment because he also wants to study hard and he, he was telling me that he's also learning some of these uh, virtues of being clean and, and all that. It was really an encouraging day to see that Tumaini Kowatoto is bringing transformation in the lives of children who at one time in their life, they were at the point of giving it up. My name is uh, Bernard Modi Mwangi. I was in this place, Joseph Kangeda Rehabilitation Center, uh, around 11 years ago. The, the hardship at home forced me to come to the street to look for a better life, maybe. And I can still remember the, the, the bed that I used to sleep on. And uh, it's here. This is, the dorm, this is the bed that I used to sleep on. It's here. This one. This is the bed that I used to sleep on during that time. I was here for three months. I stayed here for three months. Yeah. So after high school, I was selected to join Karatina University. Next year, a time like now, I'll be done with education and uh, come, uh, come November, I'll be graduating. I think I should have started by, by rate is to thank to Maini Kwawatoto. This fight them. Since I met them, it have been a turning point. The time that I met them, it was a life-changing experience. Imagine I could be still in this place. Maybe I could have ran away, I could be on the streets. Uh, if I think critically, maybe I would be dead. Maybe I would be engaged in drugs. But right now I'm focused, I'm purposed in life. I salute them. Yeah, thank you. The government in the past used to watch us from afar, but as we've uh, shown them the results, we have interacted with them, uh, people in touch with the children. So once they gather the children, they now call us and say, this number of children are willing to go home. Would you work with them? Because the government now realizes keeping children together is not viable in one place they have to work with the families and since they do not have the knowledge or the capacity to take the children back where they come from they rely on us maybe in my lifetime we will see no child on the streets Now I'm in class eight. I'm planning to sit for my KCP exam this this year. So when I pass very well and go to a national school, when I finished, I like to be a doctor. My hope for the future when I finish my university course is to become one is to become a theology, second is to become a sign language. When I meet with the with a deaf person, I can communicate with him or her, like just the way I'm communicating with somebody who is speaking.
Nice one. Nice one. Yeah. <laughs> when I was young, I am like him. <laughs> I could not be able to talk. Really? Like me, yeah. So he's... Very yeah, brave. Yeah, yeah. He's very brave, especially to talk to white people. Like me. Yeah. <laughs> That uh, once we visit the family, yeah. uh, that uh, there will be no family that will be seeing the color yes. and they start no now like uh, yeah. Yeah. She was more was specifically like to the board. That was an yes. Yeah. So for me, for me, I think I, I, I was challenged. explaining to the boy is that uh, he should have not made his decision or he has not made his decision of going home because of seeing the, the Muzungu, Muzungu the white man and they're thinking that uh, he will be sponsored, he will get a lot of whatever. So Maggie is trying to encourage him and tell him that let it not that be the reason why you are going home, but let it be a decision that you have decided you'll go home and you'll go back to school. The climax of my story is that I want to write books about my stories. I want to write books and motivate someone. I want to write books and warn those kids that think of running away of home is the best thing. I want to advise them. I want to advise the parent. And I want to fight for that place in the society. Yeah.